out on another video and some more content. The name is Law Nation. On your way in, be sure to hit the like. Sharing is caring. Who should be the Cowboys 2022 NFL Draft Big Board? Plus more and more information that rules the nation. Let's go. Hope you guys have a good day. Hope you have a better time over here. Relax your mind to this. Shout out to everybody that's on the Facebook groove. Shout out to everyone that's watching and enjoying your time. Let's go. The NFL got their mock draft, too. From NFL.com. We'll, we'll go over that as well. They got a trade in there. Let's go. Shout out to all of the HBOs, the SGs. They say, ain't no party like a cowboy party. About a law nation one. Huh? Huh? What the? What up? Come up. Turn me up. Yeah. Shout out to you, who? Mac Jones. I see you, fam. I see you already in chat. Irvin. What's good with you, man? All right, so it's getting closer and closer to draft time, the actual one, right? And everyone have high expectations of their particular team. I always say that the draft season is, is one of the better seasons. There's no win or losses. Uh, there are always chances that your team can change just like that. No one saw Parsons last year around this time, right? Uh, no one got a chance a few years back to believe in um, the Ravens' Lamar Jackson. No one saw him, right? Yeah, he, he was the bottom end of that draft. A lot of teams passed up on him, right? Pat Mahomes. People never knew that Pat Mahomes would be Pat Mahomes. So that's why the draft is always a prevalent, beautiful, wonderful season because nobody know right and for 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 this right here i don't want you guys to beat yourself up if you don't get the player that you want it sometimes can be the player that you really want go to another team and bust up and be a bust and then you be like mm, i'm glad we didn't get him right <laughs> and sometimes the guy that you didn't like be the mvp be the hall of famer Look at Tom Brady. A lot of people are probably like, ah, he ain't nobody. And then a couple of years later, Super Bowls. Then a decade later, you know, Hall of Famer, why he playing? And then another decade later, he's still playing. <laughs> That's the craziest thing of drafting, right? Appreciate everybody for jumping in. Uh, Jay Versick, man, thank you, man, for your donations, your love, and adulations. Appreciate you. I bet. Cowboys are planned on Thanksgiving and Christmas night. Yeah, <laughs> I can bet you $100 that they plan on Thanksgiving, but I don't know about Christmas night. I, I don't know, but we'll be watching whenever and wherever they are planned. Um, offensive line or wide receiver, this is from Tristan Davis on the Facebook groove. Hey, you got to go with offensive line in the first round. If not, you really have to do your homework to get that offensive lineman in the second. And if you really crazy with it in the third round, you really got to do your homework on that offensive line in the third round to be a starter, to fill in the hole, right? But as far as if you don't want to do a lot of homework, if you don't want to do a lot of study time, you can pick that wide receiver. Hmm? That wide receiver may be that groove. Shout out to you, Jay Lombardi. Shout out to you, uh, Pilon, that's on the Facebook. Appreciate you. Um, 
I forgot to put up the graphic part of it. But let me see if I got Twitter right here. Let me pull up my Twitter. I appreciate you guys for patience. I appreciate you guys for for your time. And I'm going to pull this one up. Bear with me right quick. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, there was some news out there. And we're going to talk uh, about the draft and the big board in a few. Yesterday, there was some news out there for the Giants seeking uh, a trade for the 2021 first-round draft pick, Kadarius Toney. Um, would you guys be uh, entertained? Would you guys be entertained with a Kadarius Tony? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Would you guys be entertained with a Kadarius Tony? Now, it shows and it proved that this guy don't like the Giants. He got a rapping career. He want to be a rapper. He, you know how this goes with the Cowboys. And he's a dynamic wide receiver. I like his skill set coming out of college. And when I started looking at his tape, I was looking at the tight end. And then I said, hey, who's that guy? <laughs> because the tight end is who we were high on last year. you know. And I thought for sure that this guy right here, would have been nice if the Cowboys got their hands on him. But I didn't want him in the first. No, 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 no. But Tony is no slouch. Yes, my guy is Modius. So what would you do? I would give the Giants maybe a fifth-round draft pick, a fourth-round draft pick. And that's where I'm stopping it at, right there. Four, four, fifth round draft pick. We'll take on his contract and we'll say, okay. But the problem is with the Dallas Cowboys, we've been in that, we've been hit with that negative news with another guy that want to rap or what have you. And of course, people like to tie in the ropes and tie in the, uh, the, the, the symmetry there and say, hey, this guy would not get right. Sometimes a different avenue, a different spotlight will make a player better or it can make a player worse. He can be the second comment of A.B., not as it relates to on the field, but the off the field distractions, right? And this dude didn't even get his career started off yet. But a knucklehead is a knucklehead. And let me see what you guys are saying over here. Uh, Tony in the slot is scary. Yep. Who? Yeah, Kadarius Tony. Shout out to you. Here you go, man. Appreciate you. Phantom. Big board. I bet. I bet this is your big board. Law. If Lord Nicobe Dean, Carlothis, Traylon, Zion, Kenyon, they're at twenty four. Can you rate them in the order you would take them? Hmm. Why you put me in a pickle like that? <laughs> Shout out to you, Phantom. Um, I'm going to stretch out Traylon because that's an offensive want. It's not a necessary need. And I like Burks, but not for the hole that we have to fill. I think that the hole that we can fill at wide receiver, you can do it down the line. So I stretch off Traylon. He's at the bottom end of it. All right, so I'm looking at Carl Lothis, and now I'm looking at Zion and Kenyon. All right, and I'm going to talk about Lord and N'Kobe Dean. I seen Carl Lothis, man, play around with 380 pounds like it was nothing. And I'm thinking like, man, we got we good on edge. But if he's doing that over there before Dan Quinn get his hands on him, shoot. It'll be a miracle if Carl Lothis fall to the 24th spot, by the way, Cowboy Nation. So that's more of a. That Carl Lothis, man, that's more of a... Uh, uh, I want me some glory. <laughs> that's what Jerry Jones would be saying. If <laughs> I'm not going to finish it off. Uh, it's too early for that. So I'm going to stretch out Carl Lothis because I know he won't be there the 24th. Now, Zion and Kenyon and Lord and Nicobe, if I were to do this in 
positions of order where I like it. I got Zion, then I have Kenyon, and then I will go with I like Nicobe Dean over Lord, and, and trust me, that's a very argumentative statement, and I think that Lord is going to get drafted way before Nicobe Dean, but I just like Nicobe Dean the way he pursued the coverage and as well as, hey, that Georgia's defense, baby, it look good. And it's hard for me to actually give it a final grade, too, because of the front, right? But I know and I see what N'Kobe Dean can do is coveraging from sideline to sideline and hitting and covering the C-gap and squeezing inside. And, Lord, I just have my, my reservations on if he can do that on a consistent level. But that's my, that's my lineup. That's the best way I can say that. So Zion is my number one choice. And I, and I could be a thousand percent off on this one, but that's just my thoughts. Zion is your first pick, Mario. Appreciate you. I'd go after him. He can ball. BPA. Yeah, best player available. Yeah, I feel it. BPA. Hey, <laughs> we drafting BPA. Come on, sing with me. <laughs> but back to this kid right here, Kadarius, Tony. Some people had a first-round grade on him. So if you can get him for a four, four, fifth, then, then, then go ahead and make that movement, right? Um, and that's just how I look at it. Now, will it happen? I doubt it. But some people need that right wake up call, and some people need to get into the realities of it, right, Cowboy Nation? Uh, we need a defensive tackle. This is from Michael Monroe. Um, I've been saying defensive tackle for a long time, right? And last year we did backward flips as best as we could when we got Big Bo, right? And Big Bo had uh, only a spoonful of playing time because he, it was hard for him to find a field. Justin Hamilton was beating him out in some situations, played better in the preseason than him. And Justin is now in Denverland. Shout out to him He's from my hometown, Natchez, Mississippi. Uh, we have now, we had Brent Urban, who was brought in for a cup of coffee and it spilled all over the place. And he's not on the team anymore, of course, due to injuries or what have you. And we had picked up Carlos Watkins, who had a pick six, right, in one one sack. And he did a decent job juxtaposed to what we normally see out of interior play. Remember Antoine Woods, right? So he did a decent job. He did just above Antoine's Woods level, right? But neither here nor there. Going into the second year, I think that Big Bo is going to be harder. He's not going to be softy. You know, I think he's going to be a little bit bigger. And if the Cowboys can find themselves picking up another interior guy, it will be a plus. Nevertheless, I really think that what we're missing out of this whole equ equation is that Osa played out of his mind, made you guys forget about Tristan Hill a little bit, right? And Naver Gallimore, we thought that he would just be a three-tech. Naver Gallimore now looked like he can fit into that one-tech role. That boy is big and wide. So if anybody that you draft out of this draft, and if you go use your first round pick for Jordan Davis, and that's where I stop it at as far as the interior guys, as far as first round draft pick, would be a plus because you can add him into the mix. And let's not forget about on certain packages, they even kicked D-Law in as the three tech, right? And he was marching up the field from there. I just look at it like this, Cowboy Nation. We're not going to fall into the trap of saying, hey, is, is boom or bust or what have you if you don't draft a, a defensive tackle in the first. But you can probably escape from this if you find a DT in the third. That will be at least us identifying where we can benefit this team or develop this team even more to help out those linebackers. 
So my positional of needs would be if you go with an offensive guard in the first, right, and then to seal off that other part that you have as a wide receiver, you can do that in a second. Uh, Raymond Thomas, shout out to you. Shout out to all of the Thomases out there. Take best player available. All right, so let, let's use this as a guide. Let's, let, let's use this as a guide right here. This is Cowboys. Uh-oh. There we go. This is Cowboys' top 30 visits. And I kind of darken the players that I like out of the Cowboys' top 30 visits. And at the top of that list, and this is no particular order, but I kind of darken the players that I would like in this system. Chris Alave, I think that he can take the top off the defense, new ones route runner. Hey, if he falls to the 24th spot, it will be great for us, right? Drake London, he's not the fastest of the fastest person out there, right, on the field, but his aggressive mentality, the way he pulled the ball out of the sky, he will be your quote-unquote opposite guy uh, on the field, as relates to C.D. Lamb, and he can fit right on in as that X position. Like, that's where you're going to be at. On the high end, you can have a Mike Evans. On the low end, you can have a guy that's delivering pizza in three or four years. That's the craziest part about him, right? Traylon Burks, you see him highlighted. You got to switch your eyes if you can't see it or turn your phone sideways and zoom in. Traylon Burks, I like him. Oh, I like him. Will the Cowboys be able to utilize him? Yeah. And he will be that pickup just like you guys love L-O-V-E. Debo, three years from now, depending on which system Traylon Burks go to, mark it and write it down, he will be talks of like, hey, man, this dude right here, he's stiff-forming people. He's pulling the ball out of the sky. And while he's coming down, he's giving Moses an autograph. Like, look, Moses, since I'm up here, I might as well give you an autograph, you know. And coming down with the football and running it in for the score. That's Traylon Burks. How point the ball and bring it down. Drake can do some of that, too. You know, if you pull up Drake film, you can see that. And then Drake got a lot of barking after the play. I like that, you know. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Rucker. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I look at it. He's not a blazer, but I would still look at that situation. If you pick up Rucker, you can have now the 12 personnel back into the fold. And I like that out of this offense where you can present power and still throw out of it. And you can present power and run off of it. I think that that keep teams and the opposition's on their heel longer and more juxtaposed to 11 personnel. That's just my thoughts, Cowboy Nation. All right, Charles Cross, he's way gone, but he was a 30 visit. I like him. I like Charles Cross. Zion Johnson, 30 visit. Man, y'all know I like Zion. Can play at guard and center. You got position to flex. Come on, baby. Come on with it. Kenyon Green, big boy. 320, 325-ish. Big boy. Get to the second level. Can play guard and center. When he got picked up and was recruited to Texas A&M as a tackle, right? He can do it all. He can play on every part of that line. I'm not sleeping on Kenyon Green. I like him and Zion. It's just that Zion is my one, right? Uh, Mercedes says, uh, and we'll let that, we're going to let that pull up in a few, but I appreciate you. I know you're saying offensive line, what if Chris Alave or Williamson falls? I'm hearing the wide receiver will fall. Do you still take Zion or Green? Also, Burks will fall out of the first. Woo! You know, Here's the thing. With Traylon Burks, it goes like, I'm going to answer your questioning from the back end, you know, and so that people on my Facebook can see your feed here and your question there. Let me put it up here because people on my Facebook can't see that. Here's the thing. I'm going to answer it on the back end. 
Traylon Burks may fall out of the first, right? But the craziest thing is where we picking at in the second, he'll be gone by that time frame because we're picking pretty much on the back end of the second round, right? But to your answer there, just because a player fall out of the first don't mean that they are terrible, right? The players that a lot of people banging on the table for now, A.J. Browns of the Worlds and D.K. Metcalf, they, they, they for dog sure wasn't the first round draft pick, right? All right, so, but when we talk about Zion and Green, the only reason why I feel that Zion and Green are first round picks or what have you is because of the talent level of offensive line drops way down and you have to have patience and development time in your mind to pick an offensive lineman in the latter part of the second and third i really feel that the levels of alave and williamson jameson williamson is that you can find a wide receiver that you can slowly integrate into your offense in the third round in the fourth round and have the same production right so that's just how I look at it. And I could be a million percent wrong. These two can be the only wide receivers in this entire draft class that can shake, right? <laughs> but I'm quite sure that these two guys may not be the answer. Um, <clears throat> Daylon Farm is a um, guard, is a Memphis day one starter. And it's from Warren Jones Sr. Appreciate you. Yeah, and he just got to go into the right system as well, you know. It, it, this is this draft, this draft is just like a hit or miss situation. But I feel you guys. Let me go back to my top 30 um, draft visits. And you see Jordan Davis down there. You see Jalen Watermeyer and Jelani Woods, if you guys can see this, squint your eyes to see it. Those guys there, those guys there, I like the ideal of making it easier for my quarterback. The tight end will always be the quarterback best friend or one of the quarterback best friend, right? And 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 for those who say, yeah, law, you love that 12 look. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that 12 look is beautiful because of the ideal of where you can confuse the opposing teams as it relates to lineups. Uh, Sanders is an edge. He's, you guys see him on the bottom end, right right above Sam Williams. This is no particular order. And, of course, Jordan Davis. I already told to you guys about my love for Jordan Davis. Uh, I just think the world of him, right? And especially on how he will fit into this system, right? If you look at Vita Vea, and I'm not saying that Jordan Davis is better or worse than Vita Vea, but if you look at what Vita Veda do for the Buccaneers, he's not an every down player, but when he's in the mix, those linebackers keep their pad levels clean because they can fly around. And he's doing his job too, presenting pressure. It's never going to be like a six or seven sack year for him, but he's doing the dirty work, keeping the linebackers' pads clean, keeping those alleyways available to rush said quarterback nevertheless Sanders and Sam Williams as an edge guys I want you guys to look at it as even if though you see the linebacker you see the edge you see the philosophy where they are bringing in you br they brought in a lot of offensive linemen they brought in a lot of wide receivers they brought in a lot of edge guys and linebackers not everybody 30 visit is this large right I've seen some people had their 30 visits down to only 10. They didn't accept a lot of 30 visits. Nevertheless, we got some big names on this board right here for our 30 visits. Even Lord, James Houston, uh, I would love for him. Shout out to D. Jackson State, one of the greatest universities in the world, right? <laughs> and Quay Walker, you see him out there. And the, the guy that's underrated on this list is Marquise Bell. You look up Marquise Bell. He will ring that bell, right? He come down the field. He can play the fourth side. And when he squeezes and he hit you, you will remember that bell over there is hitting. Mama, <laughs> that boy over there hit me. 
you're going to be crying when he hits you. That guy can hit. Florida A&M is the reason why most teams will look at him and say, ah, he played or what have you, but he went to a smaller school. But it is what it is. Uh, Bell's a serious athlete. Yeah, it's it just that, you know, he went to a smaller school. Uh, math is in the second. I, I would like I would like for the Cowboys to look at their roster and say, all right, we got a gang of three techs, man. <laughs> we do. And then in certain situations, our three techs, you're even getting kicked out for D-Law to squeeze inside to be a three so that we can pull Parsons down so he can rush off the edge. It's crazy, right? Raw Truth, appreciate you. Shout out to all of the HBCUs. You know, I appreciate you, man. You don't like Lil either, Law? I mean, this is from uh, Pig. Appreciate you. Uh <sighs> He, he'd probably be the Hall of Famer out of this list, right? <laughs> That's how crazy this draft is. Um, with that being said, let's pull up. We're going to pull up two big boards. And then we're going to do the NFC, not NFC, but the NFL mock draft. We're going to go over their mock draft of who they got for the Cowboys. And let's pull it up right here. All right, so this right now is the Draft Network. This is their particular top. And we're going to stop it right at 50. Okay? This is their top 50 guys or what have you. Kyle Hamilton. There would not be a possibility for us to get Kyle Hamilton unless, unless sometime between here and now he get arrested or you fool around and get caught up into some type of charges, you know, there won't be a situation. And I'm not trying to make fun of this, of this, of this thing right here, but that's just how it goes. There's no chance, right? Stingley, I think that he's going to be gone. Aiden Hutchinson, but look at the order that they have these guys in. And this is their particular top draft board, a big board not based upon team needs or what have you and where they will get drafted, by the way. All right, so let me do this uh, as well. For those who are patiently waiting, let me go ahead and pull this up because I want you guys to be a part of this as well. And if I can find it, here we go. Bam, let me put it up there. And uh, you guys can see the number 657-390-7391. Give me a Give me a shout out if you want to talk about this. You got Kip Thibodeau at seven, Evan Neal, Trayvon Walker. You got Linda Baum at 10, Kayon at 11, Charles Cross at 12, Jahan Dotson at 13, who's very dangerous, by the way. Jamison Williams at 14, Wyatt at 15, Zion at 16. Remember, this is taking all of your needs out of the way and where teams really like to draft out of the way. This is their version of top 15 or top 20, what have you. Uh, Leo, he's 17. They got him over Chris Alave, but that's a story of a different day. You got Drake London right at 20, 21, Jordan Davis, Daxton Hill at 22, Kenny Pickett, 23, Ahmad Gardner, Sauce, you know, at 24. And I'm going to tell you guys, there's some people be saying, man, Gardner, if, if he if he falls to the 24th spot and the Cowboy pass up on him, you know. You must be out of your goddamn mind. Right, right. People going to be saying that because especially his length, his range, the way he run, and especially if you look at the cover three defense and how they operate and proceed, man, it's crazy, right? You got N'Kobe Dean with the 25th, Perry on the 26th, Kalar. Kair Elim, Elim, I'm killing this man's name, Elim, uh, at 27, Lord at 28. So what I want to tell you guys, out of all of these guys, you see some of these good names, and there ain't no way Garrett Wilson is ranked 31st, but that's just how they got their particular situation all set up at this thing. Uh, Isaiah at, at 33. What I want you guys to understand, if I stroll down here, David Bell, he's pretty good. Scott Moore. There's somebody 
that we should have a chance and opportunity to draft that can help elevate this particular team. As we look at this top, we'll go all the way down to 50. 44, John Miche. 45, Christian Harris. 46, Traylon Burks. Okay. And we're going to stop at 50 right here. Sean Ryan at 50, who I believe he's going to play interior. He's not going to play tackle on the next level. What I want to tell you guys right here, and Tariq Woolen, he, he's six foot four, can leap out of the building. And that fits right on in with what the Cowboys like to do, by the way. One thing I'm going to tell you guys right now is this particular team will have the opportunity. And let me just stroll all the way down to the 56 guy. 56 guy, Dalen. And then Christian off, Chris, uh, Calvin Austin is the 56 guy. We should have an opportunity to come out of this draft with at least one of these guys, right, from the 56 all the way down that can be an impact to this team. We shouldn't be going around in this particular draft playing around with our food. And just to measure multiple times, this is their version of their list, and I'm not saying that these guys are right or wrong. I'm not here to fight today. And this is PFF's list, right? A little different. Who who they got? Aiden Hutchinson is the premier number one. And shout out to PFF. Uh, Derek Stingley, he's number two. We're going to go all the way down. Charles Cross. Let me see how far I can go down to 24th spot at least. And this, this is not their particular mock draft. This is just their player rankings. Zion Johnson right at the 24th spot. So you see how this thing goes? And... Jordan Davis at the 20th spot. Nicobe Dean at 19. Bernhard Ryman at 18. Okay, so let me go all the way down to the 56th spot. Appreciate everybody for jumping in. Thank you guys for being part of this episode. <laughs> Just got a text from my brother. It's funny. All right, uh, let me go all the way down to the 56th spot. I'm going all the way down. Look at that. Look what you came to see. A Jahan Dotson at the 56th spot. Now, what I want to tell you guys, that the Dallas Cowboys have the opportunity and the chance right now to get one of those guys, a Jahan Dotson, a Zion Johnson. Let me ask you this. If the Cowboys go with this right here, With the 24th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Zion Johnson, right? You got your answer now, Edgar. You solidified that part of your team. Also, he's not going to come in at a cakewalk. No, you got Connor McGovern that's going to be looking at that thing and saying, hey, I want to fight for it. You even got Matt Forniark saying, hey, I've been in the weight room all off season, And you think you're going to come in here just because you're the rookie to get this starting spot? No, I'm fighting. I want to be a guard, too. I want to get some PT. And then Tyler Biotta is going to say, hey, man, I've been working out, too. So when they try to flex you back inside, this is going to be a dog, a slugfest for you to get that spot. That's going to be the situation and scenario. On top of that, Cowboy Nation, on top of that, think about this right here. Think about this. Let me slide this over just a little bit. Bear with me. Bear with me. Here we go. Bam. And here we go. All right. Now, on top of that, think of this right here. Let's go all the way over to the NFL. Let's do their mock draft. So they got the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Aiden Hutchinson, right? And then Kenny Pickett, he goes to the to, to the Lions or what have you. Sauce goes to the the Texans. Shout out to him. Trayvon Walker goes to the Jets. Icky goes to the um Quano goes to the uh New York 
Giants. Evan Neal goes to the Panthers. Thibodeau, Giants. Malik Willis, it seemed like a good spot for him in the Falcons uniform. Jermaine Johnson goes to the Seattle Seahawks. Garrett Wilson goes to the Jets. And you think about what the Jets doing. They need a wide receiver to balance out the young quarterback over there. Why not? Kyle Hamilton goes to the Washington Commanders, right? Which would be a guy that's going to get burnt by us. You know, we're going to burn him, but that's just what it is, right? So he's going to the Washington team. Matt Corral going to the Steelers. We're going to stroll down Charles Cross to the Texans. We'll see how that works. Stingley goes to, dare I say, the Baltimore Ravens. Jordan Davis seems like a pick that would go to the Eagles. Think about this, Cowboy Nation and everybody that's listening. That is the situation that most people will look at and say, that's realistic. Fletcher Cox, they, they only brought him back for a cup of coffee, right? I believe for only one more year. So that's the situation in the half. Um, is there – is Raw True? Appreciate you for the donation there. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see what you what you had to say over here. Give me one second right here. Let me, let me pull this up for you. Is there some way Jordan Davis fall to the Cowboys? The whole NFC East would have trouble running against that defense. Yep, they would have big trouble, baby. <laughs> running against this particular defense. And let's not get it twisted. If the Cowboys offense can still pick up a little bit where they left off at last year, and if we can continue to play our style and our brand of defense, it will make teams shy away from the run. It's hard to continue to run the rock when you know that you got to match the points that the opposing team is doing. Yep, let's go with it. And um, <clears throat> Desmond Ritter goes to the Saints. I'm moving down. Drake London goes to the Chargers. Let me see how it. All right. So Williamson goes to Williams goes to the Eagles. Yeah. Lord goes to the Saints. And this is the thing that we really have to say to ourselves. <laughs> Hold on, let me play it again. The Cowboys trade up. Let, let, let me let me do a quick pause right quick. I ran up a check, I might do it again. Enemies close, have me thinking they're friends. Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my ass. Took so many years, I've been swaying for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I'll do it again. Add it up, add it up. Bankroll, bankroll. Euro, Euro. Peso, peso. Add it up, add it up. I'm just doing me, everything is on me. Oh, you matter what? 